to a movement and things that are going on that affect our right to keep and bear arms. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, I have some important updates in the current battles, which are attempting to strike down the state of Illinois' ban on so-called assault weapons. We're going to be breaking down how millions of law-abiding Americans woke up in 2024, now potentially as felons, simply because they own the most common rifles and magazines in the entire nation. Millions of people in Illinois now face serious criminal convictions because the Seventh Circuit, you know, the Ombong panel there decided to directly defy what the Supreme Court said in their rulings in the Bruin case. And even worse, the Supreme Court itself has been unwilling to hold these lower courts accountable on this issue. However, there is a little bit of a glimmer of hope that we need to talk about as well. A bunch of cases have now been fast-tracked through the process, which may give Illinois residents some protections. As you may recall, recently we received news that the U.S. Supreme Court denied two emergency injunctions which were asking for the U.S. Supreme Court to put a temporary halt on the statewide rifle magazine ban. Those cases which we talked about were the Culkins v. Pritzker case and then also the NAGR v. Naperville case. These cases involved a challenge to the Protect Illinois Communities Act, or PICA, which places unconstitutional restrictions on rifles and magazines. PICA also requires a registration requirement to essentially grandfather in those rifles and items that were already possessed, which means that there was a registration period, but now it's closed starting in 2024. That means that millions of Americans in the state of Illinois who did not register firearms or various parts which needed to be registered are now open potentially to serious charges because of this unconstitutional law. The Culkins case, which we've talked about, was a case originally brought in a state lower court, state of Illinois state court case, and essentially on review, the state court judge there issued a summary judgment against the state of Illinois, finding that this ban was unconstitutional and, you know, denied equal protections under the state constitution. Now, in response to losing that case, the state of Illinois appealed the decision up to the Illinois State Supreme Court. So the Illinois State Supreme Court got involved, review, reviewed the case, reversed ultimately the lower court's decision, and that then led this case to being you know, sought for review in the U.S. Supreme Court. One of the main things that also happened in that case is there was a request for an emergency stay. However, the U.S. Supreme Court ultimately denied both the request for an emergency stay and then also they denied taking review of this case because they held a conference on January 5th on whether or not they would take an actual review of this case and ultimately decided, no, we're not going to take review of this case either. And also we are going to deny the request for an emergency stay. Now, the second case that was denied the emergency request for a stay was the NAGR versus Naperville case. In the NAGR case, the plaintiffs also filed for emergency intervention, but again, the U.S. Supreme Court denied the request for an emergency state. Then also, the Seventh Circuit en banc panel denied review in the NAGR case, and they also denied review in a bunch of other cases, you know, that were challenging PICA. So that was not looking good at all. The U.S. Supreme Court didn't want to get involved, and then the Seventh Circuit en banc panel also did not take review of any of these cases. However, NAGR still has options. Like a lot of these other cases, uh, they can still seek Supreme Court review, but as of right now, a bunch of these cases have not actually filed for traditional writs of cert.